what is up, head hunters and executive recruiters? Uh, we are bringing the sexy back. This is David Stephen Patterson. You know me as DSP. And here uh, you may have me realize that Neil Lubavitz is not on the show. Lubavitz um, is this. I like to meet the new co-host of the Editors and Boxers <laughs> Talking Smack, Michael G. Cox. Well, Welcome, oh. Michael. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for God, letting thank- me know last minute that I needed to jump on a call. <laughs> yeah, I need you right now, man. Now Neil <laughs> Neil is out. Uh, uh, Neil is out uh, um, uh, on a work related matter, and uh, and and hopefully all charges will be dropped because those <laughs> allegations uh, are are completely off base. Okay, so that's right. Um, it wasn't yeah, so, him. It was not him. I swear. Anyway, with that said, we have uh, Michael G. Cox with us, and uh, today we're going to be talking uh, about leadership calls. Uh, and uh, leadership calls is something that I've been uh, pushing for a long time. I'm a big, big believer in them, especially for long game. Um, and so uh, Michael's been uh, a big proponent of, of leadership calls, and he used them in his own practice. We're going to talk a bit about that. But uh, yeah, before we get into into that, man, let's let's talk. Let's do some little, a, a bit of banter here. Uh, yeah. Michael, right now, he was telling me that he is in Mexico. Was it Monterey? Yeah. <laughs> I, okay, dude, I've been everywhere. So it, it feels like I'm living over here now permanently. Um, we came to Mexico about three or four weeks ago. Um, we were in Monterey for two weeks, and then we went to a uh, cabin in the mountains for a long weekend. And now we're in a different city near the coast, and we're going to be here for one month. And then after this, we're going to Sao Padre Island for a week. And uh, after that, go back to San Antonio. I almost I died on the way to Sao Padre Island back in the back in the spring of ne- of was it 1994, maybe 95. Spring break, Sao Padre. Uh, my buddy Force was driving uh, there. We, actually, we, were, we, were, we weren't too far out of San Antonio at the time, 2 o'clock in the morning. We were driving. He had the cruise control on the car set for 105 or 100 or something like that. <laughs> That's safe. <laughs> That's yeah. Just in case I fall asleep, I don't want to let up off the gas. <laughs> exactly exactly and that's what happened all we were all asleep including him two o'clock in the morning uh i was in the back we all had our seatbelts on but i woke up uh upside down and sp- well, I, just, I just remember seeing sparks everywhere as the car is sliding on its on its um uh on its roof sliding down the road until it finally stops and we all survived uh we just had a couple cuts and, and scrapes but uh uh we the car didn't make it over- a car did not make it. None of us were <laughs> old enough to to drive uh, the car because yet I think you had to be 25 to be an authorized driver. We were How did like you 20. get it? Uh, a buddy of ours rented it, and then and then and then we and then we used it. So uh, did you guys have the insurance that, on it? Uh, I don't remember, man. It's been so long ago. I will yeah. say that. I will say that uh, um, uh, uh, we so we had the record come and then we ended up staying the night somewhere in some motel or hotel or what have you and we actually uh, uh, decided to bust the rest of the way there because we're thinking man this is a life this is a once in a lifetime opportunity we're gonna have the best story in the world to tell all the girls yeah uh, Padre, most people you know, wait to get to it. Most what? people wait to get to South Padre Island before you try killing yourself, and normally through alcohol poisoning. You guys were like overachievers, man. Well, we tried. Well, uh, I will. I will say this: that story did not work to get us any sympathy from the girls in South Padre. We were definitely not cool enough to 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 uh, uh, piggyback off that story. But you know, that said, that was my South Padre story. Uh, oh man, we think we lost. Uh, we lost Michael. He clicked off the shards. I guess it is just me now until uh, Michael comes back on. Uh, hopefully he – oh, there he is. There he oh. Is. Hey, what is up, what Michael? Happened there? What happened, man? Uh, hey, right, you like so many other things, the internet is sketchy yeah. down here. Yeah. Hey, hey, uh, hey, so, hey, where you're at right now, are you, are you seeing a lot of uh, – is there a lot of um, – I know it's, especially if you go up north, you get lots of that um, – um, uh, 
uh, the, the violence, like the, like the like the cartels and whatnot. You see any of that? Is that where you're at? No, fortunately, we have not seen any of it. We've heard about it, and it kind of altered our plans a little bit. But uh, we've been perfectly safe and uh, just fine. And 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 uh, right now in the city that we're at, things are going very smoothly. The kids are in tennis lessons and swim lessons and all that stuff. Uh, so, so, um, uh, are your kids going to be joining the cartel anytime soon? They're on the list. So They're on the list. okay. Are they, yeah, you know, it's, it's tough to choose which cartel, you know, like sometimes, you know, you get, you know, it's, it's like rush week in school, right. you know, they're, they're all making their case. You're like, man, I, I really like these guys, but then you got the, the, the war is cartel and you know, they're, yeah. you know, they, they, they the, the golf, parties. The golf yeah, it's hard, to, hard to choose sometimes, you know? Um, anyway, yeah. that's uh, let's get into it. So, a uh, couple comments here uh, uh, that were that came in, and then we'll we'll start talking about leadership calls and actually start finding some real value. Uh, <laughs> let's see, uh, Jessica's actually asked about the shirts. So, if anybody who ordered the shirts, by the way, uh, the pre-order, uh, we're we're putting the order in next week. So, there's still a few days to get to get your shirts if you want, but uh, we're putting the order next week, and then we'll ship out as soon as they get. So, probably by the end of July. Uh, uh, everybody will get their uh, headhunter shirts. Um, yeah, Donna, Donna, uh, was it Donna? Donna Bobana was asking about her shirts and where they're at. She was, she, she wanted to make sure that I asked you about that. Very oh, important. We'll, we'll tell Donna Bobana that uh, they are forthcoming. I actually, <laughs> I think, I think she bought like three shirts, I, I believe, or something like that, if I remember. Um, all right, so let's chat leadership calls. What are they? Uh, so I guess Mike, Mike, I'll let you take the lead on this one. Um, since, uh, since you've been, you've been using them in your practice. So, uh, yeah. yeah, tell us about that. So the, the, the leadership call is for me, it, it's been a, a, my, my business development basically. So through, um, messaging campaign, I'm targeting, uh, VPs of sales exclusively so i'm going after vps of sales i'm not going after hr people because i don't i don't really speak that language um and inevitably especially last year a lot of them would reply and say you know eventually through the, throughout the um sequence that starts with the connection request they would reply and say we're not hiring man i don't think anybody is and not only that i'm looking for a job can you help me so I would turn that into the leadership call. So we would schedule and the hard thing was trying to get them to commit to like 60 minutes, which is impossible. Sometimes I had 15, sometimes I had 30. And on that call, first I would send them a note. This is what we're going to cover. Um, and then on the call, we would talk about their, their career. And it was, um, I pulled up my notes. What, what is their current situation, envision next career steps, barriers to success, um, and then it was uh, what you bring, what are, what's your unique skill set, your talent track record, what are your search parameters, what are you actually looking to accomplish here, um, and then we're going to cover some action items. So on that call, we go through that, and it's not... I, I would preface it with, look, normally when you're speaking to a recruiter, it's a lot of glad handing, uh, kissing your ass a little, and then saying, well, when something comes across my desk, I'll be sure to let you know. And what I tell them is I'd rather accomplish something that's a little bit more meaningful and valuable to you. And then we start having harder questions immediately and just, it's a hard question and shut up. Hard question and shut up and don't, don't fear the silence. Um, and that gets them really thinking and realizing, oh, this isn't a normal recruiter call and, and they get really engaged. But the key is that you really have to be able to help them. And you, you have to have something that you can give them um, that, that is of high value. And if they don't see the value, well, then obviously that's the wrong audience. But that's where it would start. And then they would see that I'm dedicating several hours to assisting them in their search. Now, typically it should be ending with a, that's how I can help you. 
and this is how I want to help you today in your current job. But they had already told me that they weren't hiring. So most of them came back to me when they landed the new job and they had a deep belief that the work that we did together on this leadership call and all the subsequent calls that come from that with reviewing their resume, LinkedIn profile, optimizing that stuff, they felt that I had really helped them find that next job. And they come back to me once they've been there for a month or two and say, all right, man, listen, I want to try and help you out. Do you fill these types of positions? Because I'm about to revamp my team or add to my team. So uh, up until like April of this year, from I'd say about October, November 2020 until April 2021, Every bit of the biz, uh, of business that I landed during that time frame came from those discussions and those conversations. That's so, amazing, man. Uh, it's been yeah, huge, dude. So thank you. you. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Thank, well, thank you for uh, for, you know, for for believing in it and actually and for for giving me the props. I will say so, so for those of you um, who aren't familiar, familiar with leadership calls, uh, just to give you the thirty thousand foot overview, and then we can talk some some details, but. Uh, this is the class. It, it's it's similar, similar, but it's not the same as the classic flip call. So for those recruiters who remember, uh, uh, trainers typically would uh, train uh, uh, how to flip calls, right? You would call a leader uh, with a uh, a job, uh, or you allude to that you work at these levels, which you know, get nothing wrong with that. Uh, although uh, I have seen trainers talk about taking a job off the internet and pretending it's yours. I would not recommend that. That's that's unethical. You're, you're lying in essence. But but uh, using your your ability to or uh, using your status as a headhunter, as someone who works at those levels, uh, obviously it gets it gets you an in. It's a carrot in a lot of ways, more so than uh, uh, most people trying to sell them would have. And but the key is, though, is uh, that that always came up was how do you how do you flip it? Because usually how it's taught is something to the effect of, you know, you, you talk about their company and, and what they're doing. You say, well, well, gosh, Bob, uh, that sounds great. You know, your company sounds really amazing. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, but do you use recruiters there too? I mean, it's kind of clunky uh, when That's you do horrible. like that. It's, it's I ain't going to lie to you. I probably used that when I was in, in staffing uh, many a day ago or many a year, I should say. Um, and, and it's, it's painful. It, it's like, it, it hurts to hear that again. And, and, it, and it hurts to say it, you know, when you're, you're like, oh, I can, I can hear myself cringy. say it. And it's, it's, it is pretty cringy. And look, at the end of the day, it's not like horrible. I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 no, it does is. to a certain degree. It is horrible, but, but it does it can work, but yeah, you're right. It is clunky. Uh, and it's not as nuanced as, um, it, as I like it to be. And so um, yeah. and we talk about, about the different frames that you set to actually flip it. Cause the way we flip it in leadership calls is pretty significantly different than, than that. It takes a lot more work, but, um, but the way you do it, you um, there, there, there's a process we could talk about, uh, about that. I'm, I'm curious though, Michael. So what's your, if you were to look, if you were to think about like clunkiness, I would submit that that type of flip is about as clunky as you can get in this business. It's, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. No, absolutely. That you have a conversation where you're trying to tell them that you're going to find them something and, and, and it's a lie. And then you, you, you let the cat out of the bag and you basically tell them really the only reason I want to talk to you is not that I can help you, but I would be remiss if and that's, that's the worst. And, and, and that's, worst. It, it just doesn't work. But I guess the, the only saving grace for that approach is, well, it's no worse than what 90% of your comp your competitors are doing. So that you're, you're in safe company there. You're, you're in the masses. That is very, very true. And it, it is everybody else is doing it. And so uh, it's not like it, it, it doesn't work ever, but yeah, it is clunky. And yeah. if they, if, if and if they if they have any knowledge of, of really what's going on how recruiters work they can tell they're not they're they're they're, yeah. they're not dummies uh, so the way uh, i like to do uh, uh these sorts of leadership calls i'll kind of um 
so 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 in terms of the large large overview right in terms of uh, of how you go about it we get and we can kind of dive in further uh but just in general the way i look at it is when you're when you're setting up these calls or when you're on the call it's really important that for when you set the right frame the frame meaning the you know the context of the interaction right as opposed to yeah. and, and by that i mean you can put somebody up on a pedestal and 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 uh gullage you will look here, sir i would love to get your business what do i have to do to earn your business that that's putting them on a pedestal that's that's a frame where you're asking yeah. and asking them of something and and in a reality the frame should be they've got the problem you have a solution now you yeah. don't know what the problem is, right? Because you know you're you're getting on the phone and talk to them ostensibly about the leadership career, but maybe they're I can look, maybe they're not. Maybe they have other problems internally for hiring that you could solve. So you're really starting to to explore. And what I found that works really well, it takes a little bit longer and takes some practice to get it right. But if you during the call, if you move from glad as Michael as you say glad handing, go from glad handing. You know, look, you know, for example, that every VP you talk to is going to be fantastic, right? There's a, there's a, there's a bell curve with everything. So, so by putting them back on their heels a little bit, asking hard questions, like you, like you mentioned, uh, kind of cracking them open, uh, yep. and, and past that, that, facility that most people have, they first speak to a recruiter, um, and, and probing, uh, about uh, probing into their leadership, uh, ability and, one thing I realized in, in this business that really has been key to my own marketing is that leadership or to the key to, to strong leadership or just the key to leadership success is um, hiring, right? It's a hiring director. That's the best bottom line. That yeah. one biggest determines their success or not. So if you can then start talking about if you're trying to assess their leadership, assess their hiring record, ask questions with their hiring record, dig into that and see what issues they've had what pains they've had and then it becomes a lot more natural to say well bob you know the purpose of this call was talking about you and your leadership career but look i have to say this is an issue that could be solved as well happy to talk to you about it if you like and you, you give them the option but it's, it's a lot less clunky and you're yeah. pivoting on a real pain as opposed to this imagined gosh bob i'd be remiss if i didn't ask but uh you use recruiter there mm -hmm. yeah I think so. Yes, the hiring record is a major pain, um, and and what I have found is with a a sales leadership executive, the more experience they have at the top, the more the, the more easily it is for them to not not just understand that most of them already understand that. And so when I hit on that. If I'm having a conversation with a more junior junior um, VP of sales, let's say that doesn't have as much experience, they may struggle with that concept a bit more. And I think that has to do with the there's this term. It's called the uh, the um, accidental sales manager. There's a book on it. It's pretty good. And basically, the accidental sales manager advances into that position because he was the great rep that you didn't want to lose. So you advanced him within the organization. And now he's thinking, well, I'm just a glorified closer. And, and sometimes they'll advance to a director level at that with that mindset, which can be very dangerous, but it's really hard to break that mindset sometimes. Rarely do you see somebody with that mindset go on to a, a VP level. But um, those individuals that have more experience understand that their success but they have a better understanding that their success relies quite significantly upon the the teams that they lead. Hundred percent. In fact, uh, I, I think there was a name for that. If I remember correctly, uh, it was uh, uh, so Douglas at not Douglas Adams, uh, the guy who wrote Dilbert. Uh, Douglas Adams wrote uh, 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 Hitchcock's to the Galaxy. I'm thinking of something else, but the, the, uh, whoever wrote uh, Dilbert, that Dilbert. cartoon. He had this uh, concept called, called the Peter Principle. I don't know if he came over the bite. That's where I heard, heard her from. Was where okay. managers get promoted up to their level of incompetence, at which point they stick, uh, yeah. or they don't advance further than that. And that's, uh, I think, is is very true. And, and what you said before about being in a, in a line sales role and going into manager role because they happen to be a good closer, or good sales rep. Um, yeah, it's a it's a totally different animal trying to manage and hire. 
And I think that the really, the most successful people in almost any niche kind of understand that, understand it's about their people and their ability to hire people and keep them and retain them and keep them happy and productive. Uh, and uh, that's, and, and I will say this, when you start asking questions designed to elicit those pains and, and get a sense for how strong the hiring record is, because that's, that's in essence, the kind of the key to their leadership success. What I found in addition, kind of cracking them open and, and getting them a, a bit honest and giving you something to pivot off of to then, you know, move towards, hey, if there's a pain, let's see if we can help solve it together. But, you know, and you probably experienced it as well, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, but I have to imagine just doing that and going through the process gives them a very good idea of like, oh, this is the kind of recruiter, this is the kind of questions he asks. Like if I'm recruiting for, if, I, if I'm uh, hiring for a manager or, or a sales rep or whatever it is, I bet Michael's going to be as hard with those folks screening them as he is with me. Yes. So for, for me, I feel that because most of these individuals see me as just another recruiter and, and the only reason they're taking my call initially is the hope that I'll have something that I, I happen to be working on. I find that that realization comes in subsequent calls it's kind of like the purpose. I had a podcast. I haven't done it for a while, been damn busy. But on this podcast, I would have conversations with VPs of sales. But before they got to that point, we had had one of these calls or we had other calls. And, and it, that um, belief in my ability to do my job well comes over time. So the more time I spend with them, the more time I invest in the relationship or in helping them with their career, the more exposure they have to me. And some of them fall out. Probably, if I'm being honest with myself, it's because they didn't see the value that I brought. Whether I communicated that or not, they didn't see it. Um, and then others, they, um, they do see it. And then they come back to me and, and we try and do some work together. Um, so because you got to realize that's a let's say it's a 30 minute call and then we have another 15 to 30 minute call and we'll do that like three or four times. And I tell them, look, you have to let me know when you're coming up for interviews. I don't have anything for you. I'm not going to lie to you. But when you do, let me know. We can prep. We can work. We can figure out who you need to network with at an organization to Make sure you're, you're connecting with the right individuals, maybe even before you ever even apply for a position. So we're having a lot of this interaction and it's investing time. And for me, it's super easy. I've been doing this forever. But something changes along the way. Number one, they're like, well, how much do I owe you? They send me bottles of liquor, which is great. Anybody can do that. I'll provide my address. They send me whiskey bottles in the mail and, and, and they're obviously they've gotten to a point in their brain when they think this dude really helped me out and he did it for free. And, and it's, yes, that's nice whiskey. I enjoy that. But a lot of them come back and say, and Oh, by the way, I'm now, you know, head of sales at carrier and I need your help. And, and, and uh, so it's, it really does help. And it, it happens. It's over progression. And, and part of it, that progression starts from the initial, you know, although having connections in common is a good thing, David, I'd welcome the opportunity to connect directly here on LinkedIn. Have a good one, Michael. Hey, thanks for connecting, man. I'm connected to a lot of people. Let me know if I can connect you. And that's it. And then you, you got this messaging sequence going and that's where it actually started. Um, and, and a lot of these come to fruition many moons down the road. So a lot of these happened. They started in in let's say March, April, 2020. And, and some of them started in, in December, January timeframe. So very different. And it takes it's, some time. It's a lot. It's a long game strategy for sure. You know, it's, it's, you, you do get some immediate gratification out of it and you can, I mean, you can win a client pretty quickly with it. You can also win a, a really strong MBC uh, and for those of you yeah. folks who aren't you're from the MRI background, like I came from, that's where I get the, the acronym from, you know, uh, uh, Canada Eco Market. 
And, and in fact, it's, if you, if you are working line level positions, you want to break into executive level role. That's one of the best ways to do it. Is I need to, to do that. Market, yeah. Market an executive, right? It, it, you know, especially if it's a really, really strong one, it gives you that credibility and you show people that I do work at this level and you're much more likely to get into the, these, these higher level roles. Um, but, but all right, let's I, talk I, about haven't, so, I haven't had a chance. I haven't had a chance. I haven't taken the, the initiative to do the MPC stuff, but I've got a, a list of like 20 or 30 VPs of sales that I've gone into deep conversations with that I know are looking and I haven't taken advantage of that. Well, you know, you know what I will say, and, and it, one thing that I've, I've um, experienced myself and I, I actually shared my screen earlier when we were talking a little early. Um, uh, so it kind of popped up here, but uh, so we, so in, in for for us, am I in the Kinetic Group, which is like we still operate that search firm and in SAP. You know, we'll talk to um, uh, prospects. I'm sorry, we'll talk to, to leaders. You know, so maybe an SAP director it could be a VP of IT or whatever. Anyway, uh, uh, so in speaking with them, if they are on the market, and one thing I love to do is 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 show them a mock-up. So we're on a Zoom call. I said, yes. well, you know, tell you what, uh, let me show you my screen. I'll share my screen and show you uh, what we do for the leaders we work with in our partner program. Uh, and of course, the partner program ma makes it sound like it's an official thing, right? Uh, and so, and so, I'll share my screen here and show you what I mean. And so, this is uh, uh, an NPC lander on a. Um, there we go. On a an SAP director that we're working with. Um, that was pretty. Yeah, look, look, look at that handsome fella. Uh, so this is Chris Denson, and he works with me. Uh, but this is uh, an SAP director they've represented, an actual, a real one. It's, it's confidential. Um, this isn't just blast out to everybody. You know, this the only only time somebody sees this is going to be when we reach out to them directly, and this could be a CIO, CTO, VP of IT, etc. And um, and so, but the cool thing about this is that when we when I say, hey, let me show you what we do and we pull something like this up and their eyes go why they say wow that's amazing because they don't they never see this from the recruiters and i like to do this because it, it shows you know in fact we'll even say hey and i'll tell you what this is actually what we do for our clients as well you know we we provide a lander uh uh for our our, our engaged clients and da, 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 da. so but you're you're demonstrating your professionalism what you do the slickness of what you do and um and if you it's it's one thing to say to a, a leader no, I'll let you know I've got a network and sort of this nebulous thing as opposed to let me show you exactly what we do, how this program works. And and uh, when you have a leader that takes the risk of working with you and, and entrusting you with their career, this helps dispel a lot of those fears that they may have. Um, so, yeah, if, if for anybody who's not using, uh, you're not doing NPC call or not doing, not running NPC campaigns, and Michael, I think you should too, man. Uh, yeah. NPCs are, and are great, great. I mean, it's, uh, you know, sometimes they don't have a position for a leadership position, but it, it, it gets you in the door. You yeah. know, uh, these campaigns get you in the door more, more than really anything, uh, anything else. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's um, not, it's like another form of a cold call. It, it is. It is. Is it? Well, let's do this. So, um, so, so let's talk about um, how to run, how to run these calls. And can we talk a lot about? Okay, you know, you, you setting the calls up is pretty easy, right? You, you reach out, uh, just, just make sure you're always talking about being the head under working at, at high levels, networking, and happy to talk to you about your own career path, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So setting yeah. up is relatively easy, but let's talk about actually getting um, the call because that's an area where I think a lot of recruiters, especially, you know, you young bucks out there, you talk to a VP and, and you're thinking, Oh, you get nervous. You're like, Oh my God, I, I got one. And, and, and you act like a little puppy dog in the call as opposed to a, a peer, right. Uh, uh, you know, a eye to eye peer. Um, so, um, again, it's been one, Michael, since you and I talked about this and we trained on it, so you, you may have kind of moved away from the way I do it. I'm kind of curious. Um, how, how are you, um, running these calls? So first I start with an, uh, either an email or a message through LinkedIn. Once we've already scheduled it, I send something to them that says, um, looking forward to our call tomorrow. Just so you know, we're going to be discussing the following areas. And I list out everything from current situation to search parameters and everything in between. And then let them know we're probably not going to cover everything, 
but we'll try and bring you as much clarity as possible to each of these areas. And that's specifically, that's the number one deliverable is this conversation and the clarity you're going to get in these areas. And then the call starts. And honestly, at, at the very beginning, like back in, I don't remember when we covered this, but shortly thereafter, I started trying to do this. Um, there goes your camera. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so the, as soon as we start the conversation, I got hung up on a couple times where it was like, oh yeah, yeah I got another call. We'll, we'll cover this later. It's like, all right, that didn't work. I got to change the way I'm doing this. Um, but once, right when we start on the call, we go through that inception script. Um, and, and honestly, I don't remember exactly how it, how it sounded, but it's, it, it's, it starts off with, hey, DSP, look, I appreciate your time. We're definitely going to talk about your career. But before we get to that, I, I just want to lay out some groundwork. Typically, when you speak to a, a recruiter, it's nothing. It's, it's little more than a bunch of glad handing and telling you that as soon as something comes across my desk, I'll make sure and alert you. And, and I'd rather do something that's a bit more meaningful and, and concrete and beneficial to you. But first, and then we go through the whole elephant in the room thing um, and, and talk about that. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to if you and I start working together, I'm not going to be recruiting from your organization. And and I got that wrong several times and, and it came across as very clunky because I didn't I didn't practice it. I hadn't really bought into it myself so it, it, it that helps to say just just kind of say you know we might end up doing recruiting for you we might um and then we go into um the uh you know i i talk about pull factors so bob you'd mentioned that that you're kind of looking for a new role typically any any kind of a job search you're going to have factors that are pushing you out of an organization and factors that are pulling you out of an, or, out of an organization, kind of like a headhunter like me. Um, but I'm curious, what is your current situation and what's got you looking? Why are we even speaking? And then and then that's kind of where it starts. So uh, I, I, I want to just one thing here. I want to just one thing started, but I will say this because I don't want to forget. And I also want to uh, hear in a minute, I want to talk, touch back on the inception script because I think a lot of people are going to question on that, but one thing, the one question you said, why, why did you book a call with me, or, or why are we talking? Uh, I find that for any call that you book, whether it be a discovery call, or it's more straightforward, you know, hey, we have a need or whatever, to all the way to a leadership call and everything in between. I always love that, just a shot across. I caught, caught my shot across the bow question, right? So, so I'm curious, why you take time every busy day to book a call? shut up see because they may give you everything they may give me nothing but it's a great shot across the bow i find yeah i like that and and the, the times that i've said that more often than not they're still on their heels and, and hesitant and they'll say oh i just want to see what you had to, you know what you had to offer see if you're working on any searches and and usually i'll say look if i do have a search i'm not going to just talk to you about an opportunity that may not make sense for you before I've even learned about you and where you're at and where you want to get to. So we, we jump back on track with that. And so we'll talk about the career situation and then we'll talk about, look, if this call accomplished everything that you had hoped that it would, what, what, what's the opportunity look like that's on the other end? And then we'll discuss that. And then I think the first really hard situation is, well, why aren't you, or I'm sorry, the hard question is well, why aren't you there yet? And then that's it. it, it and uh, they'll, they'll they'll give me reasons, and usually their reasons. And you you shared this. I know you shared this in, in many of your of your trainings. Um, and I know we've discussed it. It's what he's doing is he's throwing rocks at his perceived enemies, and I need to join in with him to throw rocks at those same enemies. They'll usually say something like, well, the organization hasn't responded well to COVID and it, it, it just, it's not working. Or the team that I've got right now isn't the team that I built, which is, that's like, that's what I'd love to hear on each one. Um, 
And, and so I'll say, yeah, that, that happens. You usually inherit a team with its own problems. And, and, and we can start throwing rocks together at, this, at those same problems. Um, but rather than, again, glad handing, I'm, I'm trying to ask them questions that are actually going to get us moving forward. Uh, you know, I will say this. We had a, uh, uh, a Jeremy Nichols. We all, uh, of course, Mark, you know Jeremy. I know Jeremy as well. Jeremy is a local uh, local to me. He's also is an accelerator client as well, or was last year. Um, uh, and he's also in Tampa. He's a fellow Tampa Hooder, right? What's up, Jeremy? In fact, I think Jeremy mentioned that uh, he's like, yeah, this, that do my G. Koch, the real deal. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Jeremy uses these calls as well. Uh, yeah, and, and, and just Michael said that, practice the script where it gets clunky. Let, let me let me let me actually break that down a little bit because you mentioned the inception script. A lot of people probably are saying like what the hell is the inception script? Oh, so yeah. what was so um, I, uh, the inception script is in essence a crutch, right? So it's a very powerful crutch, but in a lot of a lot of ways think think of it like you're on a date, right? So let's say you're single, you're you're doing Tinder or, or Cute, uh, okay, cute, but whatever one of those, right? Grinder, your you case. Go, yeah, yeah, or, or, or the grinder, uh, which is Tinder for, which I believe is Tinder for grandparents, I believe, right? Yeah, that's right. Or, 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 <laughs> grinder. Is anyway, that like uh, Nana Chaser uh, or something? <laughs> but you go on a first date, and this is, and and not say I, I I I say you should always use the lines, but you know, on a first date, what do you have? You have your, your top like stories you typically tell that. Put you in a good light. They're funny. You, 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 they roll the tongue really well. You practice you text. Practice things you've told. You, you've you've you told the story a million times. You know, uh, and there's certain things that you do because you just got them queued up, ready to go um, during that first awkward initial interaction where you first meet. You're like, you know, whatever, and, and feeling each other out. Not literally, but you know what I mean. So, so the inception script works, and what those are are crutches, right? Uh, and eventually, once you get comfortable. Either you drop them all together or you just have a normal conversation. Um, but it's a good starting off point. So the inception script works much the same way where it's a bit of a crutch where in, in, once you develop a, a really good like a nuance behind these calls, then you could drop it. But until then, it, it is a very uh, – it's a good way to set the call up. So what, what I mean by this is this. So we talk about frames. Frames are just the context of the interaction. They talk to a recruiter or they used to a recruiter being down there, right? And looking up to them, trying to get their business or what have you, right? They're in the power position. But yep. in reality, they've got the problem. You've got the solution. You just got to figure out what that problem is and see if you have the other right solution for it. So the uh, pattern, so the the inception script, uh, as it came up. Let, with let, let, let me interject for a sec. You've got, as a recruiter that's been doing this for more than five years, let's say, or or maybe just two years, whatever. You've already got the solution because part, if, if they're in, in like in the cases that I've experienced, part of the solution is they don't know how to write a resume. Their LinkedIn profile sucks. It's terrible. It doesn't capture the value that they bring. They don't know how to answer questions in interviews. Most times these guys have been drug to each, uh, to each new company by other individuals. Hey, DSP, I need a guy. Come on over here. Hey, DSP, I need a guy. Come on over here. So they, they really haven't ever been in job search mode. And, and, and they're so, yes, they have problems. You probably already have the solutions. Exactly. And it's and it's that frame, I think. Uh, it Well, you know, the, the frame that you set and I'll, I'll, I'll go over the script here because people are like, the God, what's, what's the dang script? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm on practice. It's been a while since I've I've. Um, it's actually been a while since we've even trained anybody on this, but uh, the script basically goes like this, right? So what we're going to be doing is is first off, doing some doing something a bit outlandish, and it may seem outlandish, but it's, it's meant to be a pattern and a rut because usually what happens when I'm on the phone with you, they're thinking about something else, they're in their email, they're half paying attention. In fact, you're probably when you do a screen on a candidate, you're probably in your email too and half paying attention until the candidate says something out of the norm and it and it. It, it, it snaps your, your attention to them, right? We're doing the same yeah, thing with yeah. the inception script. So the inception, inception script basically goes like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to be setting a whole bunch of frames just in the first initial call. So you first off, you, you say, look, before we get started, let's say you set the agenda. Okay, we'll be talking about this, 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 and this. But but then you go low and you say, well, Bob, before we get started, let me address the elephant in the room. Silence. 
And, and what you're doing is you're, and so this from, from what they're saying, let me just elephant in the room. It's like, let me address the obvious situation that we find ourselves in, which it isn't to them. So they're thinking like, what? Right. That's, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's the purpose of it is to snap the attention back to them. Right. Um, and so the next line is, so as you know, I always like to say, as you know, right. So I'm, 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 I'm assuming they're agreeing, they're agreeing with this statement. It's highly unethical for recruiters to recruit top performers away from their client companies. Would never do that. Have never done that. I just want to make that clear. And they're probably thinking, okay, yeah, but why? You know, they're not making that connection, right? So, so then the next line is, and the next phase is, and of course, use your own own version of it. But this is how I do it. Uh, so that said, you and I are establishing a relationship right now where I can help you expand your career. Maybe you can find the next stretch position for you, etc. Uh, and also, but at the same time we may work together in the future, whether this company or future company, where you may end up being a client. So you're probably asking yourself, he isn't, but, but uh, you're probably asking yourself, how's this jive in my stance for not recruiting from our, our client companies, right? Um, what that is in, psych in psychology is you're creating a problem that didn't exist, and then you're solving it in the next breath. Uh, and it's a very, very powerful persuasion technique. So, uh, so my view, once you become a client, uh, obviously I'm, I would never recruit from your company, but you and I are grandfathered in. But us having this discussion now, for me, ethically, I feel comfortable with working with you in the future. And if you do become a client, because you're grandfathered in, just know that I wouldn't recruit anybody from your team if you were to become a client. You know, or in, in essence, something like that. Does that make sense? And they almost always say yes, because it does on its face make a lot of sense. Um, and what you've done is you set the frame that you're an ethical recruiter because who brings up ethics in the first two minutes? Uh, you set the frame that, hey, I may be uh, asking you about your – you're setting up the, hey, I may end up flipping the call on you, right? I may talk to you about that if potentially there's a need. Uh, very open about that. But what you're also doing is you're, you're, you're doing something so um, far removed from what other recruiters typically do. Uh, it, it really – kind of put you in a whole different light and the inception script for all of this, the pattern interrupt, you're setting up the, well, he, here, I always, I talk about setting up the kiss at the end of the date, right? Uh, you can go on and get in that Tinder date and you're, you're, and you're, and you're, and you're being you know, platonic and you're being respectful, but you're never really flirting, never really dangerous. Right. And so there's no sexual tension. And then we go for the kiss at the end of the night. She's, she's like, this is kind of weird. I wasn't expecting this because there wasn't that, that, Hey, I may kiss you later sort of vibe going on. You're not flirting. I look at this a lot of ways. You're in essence saying, Hey, I'm going to go for the kiss later. FYI. And you kind of implant that in their head. That's why I call that the inception script. Um, and it's very good to use as uh, a crutch to kind of get going right until yeah. you get where you really don't need it anymore, but it's a great, great script. And yep. that's one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah, it it it, it 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 stops it's, them in their tracks because they're already just assuming I am just like their internal recruiter that, quite frankly, they don't they don't have a lot of respect for in most cases. And um and and also what it, what I I find it does very well too is again it snaps your attention to you it, it sets them up for some of the hard questions you you'll be asking and. Um, uh, gosh, we're almost out of time here. But let's talk about after. So uh, I talk a lot about waypoints, knowing your waypoints, uh, yep. knowing that I need to. So what are what for you? What are the what are the big uh, waypoints in the call that you think people need to be aware of? The the one that really gets them and and again builds even more traction for what I'm trying to accomplish, which is basically convincing them that I know what the hell I'm talking about is the unique skill set. What is it that you bring? Why would that next organization, because we already talked about what they would like to find, but why would they ever even be considered? And, and the thing is that VPs of sales, oh, dang, this guy knows it all because he's a VP of sales. And, and I'll just tell them flat out, look, I speak to VPs of sales all the time. You guys are not all top of your class. What I need to understand is what is the unique skill set that you possess 
and I got it right here, that sets you apart from all the others you'll be competing against because most candidates don't realize just how much competition they're up against um, for that next role that you might land in. And what I specifically want to hear about is how you are having hopefully a positive effect on gross profit, EBITDA, customer acquisition costs, cost of sale, revenue, sales rep production, sales rep turnover. What are you doing in these areas? And, 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 and then again, just get quiet. And if, they, if they're struggling with that, I'll say, look, David, I'll send you this question again after because we're burning time right now. But I need you to focus on these things because if I do happen to come across that, that role that makes sense for you and I present you, you're not going to get set up for an interview until you know this stuff, you know, through and through. Um, but that, that one really helps is what is the unique skill set that you bring that would convince anybody to give you the nod? Yeah, in fact, so and 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 the way I would say it, uh, it it's very it's very very similar. But yeah, it's you you want to get them on the heels a little bit because again, most recruiters at this stage of the game they're trying to impress the the VP, let's say, so they're not going to ask this question. Uh, but put them on the heels and say, look, uh, 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 yeah, I talk to VPs all day long, or I talk to VPs very very often. And of course, I ask them what sets them apart. They all pretty much say similar things. Maybe you can list out a few things that typically they would say. But look, Bob, if and, I were, and what I what I tell them, sorry, another thing that I tell them is, and don't don't mention the fact that you are a player coach, a servant leader. I, I don't want to hear anything about these 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 things that have been so overused. They are now meaningless. So. Yeah. Try avoiding sharing that. It, it, yeah, it, it's a good example. And you know, for me, I might say, hey, look, yeah, if 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 you if you retain me to work on a program manager position you were hiring for, right? I might submit five or six very very strong candidates out of the couple of hundred that we reach out to. I'm kind of planting seeds of kind of the work that we do. Um, but of those five or six, there's going to be one or two that are really going to shine, right? All of them have the same experience. All of them have similar whatever it is. So there's those there's little things that really set them apart that no one else yep. can set. What do you have? And you put them back on their heels. And what I found is that, and going back to waypoints, sometimes we get stuck in this endless conversation to nowhere, where we're we're just letting them talk, and they take control of the conversation. We have no control over it, and it just yep. ends, and you get no value out of it, and they probably didn't get value out of it either. But knowing, and I always recommend this on when you do like a discovery call or a leadership call, have a little sticky note on your desk and say, okay, at the, yeah. you know, whatever minute mark, I need to make sure I, I cover the intro and I start talking about their experience at the 10 minute mark. And again, this could be different, 12 minutes, 15, whatever, but just have an idea at 10 minutes. I need to make sure I ask that question at some point and direct them to, okay, what makes them special? I need to make sure by the 15, 20 minute mark, I'm, I'm actually tr go, trying to veer off of their hiring record. Whatever your whatever your plan is, have it and, and be cognizant of the fact that uh, that the temptation is for you to get lost in the call as yeah. opposed to you're you're steering the call and you need to know your waypoints, right? Um, now, when – so usually most people don't really have a great answer. Um for those questions that, that you said, but the ones who do, this is how you can really uh, 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 screen out like the the wannabes from the real rock stars that you want to represent. You know, if you want to find a great NPC, go do 50 leadership calls. Uh, don't just mark the first VP that that's willing to talk to you, right? Because they may not be the person that 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 you want to be representing. But um, when you talk to them about you get one mess sets them apart and oftentimes they don't really know or they give you some answers or, or they're kind of unsure and you kind of yeah. kind of help steer them try to also steer them towards the hiring record because that's a big part of leadership is it not like they're talking about the hiring record talking about their pains and issues and and maybe uh, uh, maybe the biggest lessons they've learned in their leadership career through hiring uh you know what kind of uh, leadership philosophy or recruiting philosophy they have uh, this is what gets you into that conversation where it's much easier to then pivot into your solution if it makes sense, as opposed to doing the clunky. Gosh, Bob, I'd be remiss. 
but then at least ask you, do you use recruiters there at your fine company? Uh, yeah, that's uh, so. So let me ask you this: so what do you what do you do, Michael? So would you? Because I know you also you do your own sort of transition. We both have like similar but different styles. How do you how do you transition from from that right? What what separates you? How do you make that transition to uh, uh, their hiring yeah. record? Yeah, the hiring record. So I I include that in the message that I send them before the call, and then I tell them on the call. It's kind of like the 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 old present presentation philosophy. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and then tell them what you told them. So it's I'll just say okay. Look, I, we've gone far enough with with the the, the previous one was um, unique skill set, and then I'll say, okay, look, we we've, we've spent enough time on that. We can go on forever, but the next thing we need to cover is your hiring record, and and in all of the these career calls, discovery conversations, strategy calls that I have, talent is a central issue, and typically it's a barrier to success, and it may very well be one of the contributing factors to what's got you looking today. So, you know, half of all hires st statistically, and I can send you the records and I can send you the, 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 the articles and all that, but half of all hires are mishires. Okay. So tell me about your hiring record times when it's worked well and times when it's worked ba best, uh, I'm sorry, poorly. And, and, what was the differentiator there? Why was this one better than this one? Did you do things differently? So what is it uh, about talent that is off within your organization right now? And and then again, just, just shut up um, and, and, and see what they say. Yeah. You know, and, and, and this is where you, you're looking for those pains. And I will say this, if you are, uh, trying to figure out your marketing, your sales and marketing strategy, prospecting, messaging, et cetera. Um, the best way to find out the pains of your market is to talk to the leaders. The, the, what, what they get, not finding a candidate fast enough is a pain, sure, but it's a very generic pain. The, the example I use in my market, so this is SAP. If I, you know, I work with SAP directors who are frustrated because they've got the Accentures of the world up in the border and some of the funny stuff, uh, you know, me projects that, that, that they may not need, right? Uh, they've got to deliver on these projects now. They can't find the talent in the open markets. They've got to go back to the same Accentures and Deloitte of the world and overpay for junior consultants who they have to then train on their own dime. Uh, now, for those of you who aren't, aren't, aren't in the SAP space, you think, I don't, I don't know what you just said. But if I say that to an SAP director, and that guy's like, oh, I hate that because that's that's a very common pain. It's how they talk. You get that right from these leadership calls because you start hearing their frustrations, and then you suddenly you hear some like, oh man, that's really good. Okay, when I solve this pain, this is the pain I want to solve because this is yeah. what's really sticking their craw, right? So Not usually, if if they're struggling to give me an answer, I, I will hit them with so. Maybe to better reframe the question, tell me about the the sales hiring track record that your internal and I'll always call them HR recruiters because they're not sales recruiters. Uh, I want to differentiate there. What you know? Tell me about the sales hiring record that your internal or current, maybe even external HR recruiters have built for you. Have there been many mishires there that have, you know? press the pause button on the company growth that you were tasked to deliver and then hear, hear what they have to say. Because again, I don't, I don't want to, that's where I start to pull the, the talent question away from their responsibility, even though it is, I, I want to separate and say, what are your HR recruiters or your current external HR recruiters building for you? And then start throwing rocks at those people. And uh, and by saying throw the rocks, by the way, just to clarify, uh, uh, Michael isn't really necessarily throw the rocks, but it comes from uh, I, I, uh, the Blair Warren of this book called One Sense Persuasion or something like that. But basically, the, in essence, the the uh, people do anything for those who help them to who justify their dreams, uh, allay their fear, justify their failures, uh, confirm their suspicions, to help them throw rocks to their enemies. So if you have a common enemy, you know, you know maybe talk. 
that about industry bad practices, things like that. But um, um, one thing you can add to that, and which I, I love asking this question, they they give you an answer, or let's say they have a you know that had an issue here, issue there, or whatever it is, to say, well, so why do you think that that is? Or what caused that, in your opinion, and see what they say. Because again, oftentimes, you know, and it's weird. People are look, really looking for a solution. It, well, let's put it this way: in, in the weight loss industry, it's very common for someone to buy, you know, from a half dozen to a dozen different weight loss programs before they lose a single pound, right? Well, and the reason why is because they keep looking for the same bad solutions. They don't realize that it's the solution itself that's causing the problems. They just need, well, maybe I need this program and this program, and it never works. But you ask them, why do you think it's not working? Oftentimes, they'll, they'll you can get clarity on the fact that maybe they need to do something different instead of just buy another weight loss program. And a lot of ways with these calls, asking them, you know, why they think it is can sometimes get, get them thinking or at least get uh, open a discussion where you can talk a bit more about maybe some of the reasons why those those entire issues happen. Uh, and how they can avoid them in the future. So a lot of ways you're being like um, an advisor when it comes to talent and, and demonstrating your 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 ability, but doing it in such a way where it's very it naturally flows into the conversation without having to begin be clunky about it, right? Because now you're yep. talking about a real issue that they've had. What I what I struggle what I have struggled with on these calls is to leave that open for them. So what I typically tend to do, I'm not saying this is better. Um, and I, I don't think it is. Um, what I tend to do is say the reason you and I are having a conversation to begin with is because you and I connected and I didn't connect with your HR people or your HR recruiters because I don't speak that language and I don't feel that they understand sales. And most VPs of sales are going to be doing this thing on the call. So I'll say so. Um, they don't understand sales. I don't understand HR. And so I'm typically having conversations with senior sales leadership executives um, because that, that's the language that I speak. So tell me, what are they setting up for you as far as the, the talent profile or the individuals that they're putting in front of you? Do you see that they get it or are you seeing many sales mishires? And again, it's still throwing rocks at it, but I'm being much more specific. Um, and I think my concern is if I don't say that, will they hit the target for me? I haven't, yeah. I haven't, I haven't tried that. Uh, I tell you what, Mike, I just, I just realized we're, we're actually over our time. We could talk about this for another hour or two at least, because there's so much we could yeah. dive into the leadership calls. There's, in fact. Uh, if you want to learn more about leadership calls, uh, and Melissa, by the way, I, just, I, I saw a note from Melanie Marshall um, about that. Melanie, I'll send you that information here uh, on the leadership call here, but later today. But you can also, for anybody who's listening to this, uh, you can actually get that with my 200, my 225 page, uh, very meaty, hefty sales and marketing guide. Uh, and I misspoke recruiters <laughs> realized, but go to the digitalmanager.com forward slash lighthouse. And I've got a whole section in there on, on leadership calls. And uh, the whole and, thing is in there. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it's a meaty, meaty resource. So go and download that. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I think Michael, we'll have to have you on again, man, because I think we could do another show where we can, we can actually do a little further into leadership calls and yep. then how to, uh, how to, uh, pivot. Uh, to to business and, or NPCs also actually. Yeah, um, I needed. Well, that said, I guess we'll wrap it up here. Uh, man, I, I wish we had more time. I'll tell you what, Michael. Um, if if Neil ever does quit the show, and I'm just kidding. He for those of you folks <laughs> who were at the beginning, Neil didn't quit the show. He just can't make it today. He has a, he has another. Uh, he has a, a a conflict. So um, Michael is here pinch pitch hitting pinch hitting. Uh, how, how they say it in baseball? I don't know. I'm not a big baseball guy. Um, anyway, Michael, it's been fantastic. I guess any any last words before we sign off for uh, the show? Get get into these leadership calls. It it is a massive game changer. And the only problem is that it's been such a a positive uh, a contributor to my success that I really haven't had an opportunity to get into like the MPCs and other things. Those leadership calls have been keeping me busy. 
I tell you what, yeah, leadership calls are fantastic. So, and, and use that inception script if you need a way to to set the call up until you get the skill set where you can then drop it. Uh, that's it, folks. I really appreciate it. Go download the Lighthouse Method if you want to learn more. Uh, we'll have Michael on again. Michael, thank you very much for being here. It was always, as always, it's a pleasure. And, uh, Nos vemos hasta luego. Was that? Nos vemos hasta luego. Oh, uh, Simone say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I grew, up, I grew up in Phoenix. I do, I do know a bit of Mexican slang, a little bit. That's right. All right, that's it, everybody.